That big lie we talked about earlier that President Biden didn't really win the election? Well, Republicans around the country are using these false claims of election fraud to push voter suppression. Florida just passed a new law that restricts mail voting and ballot drop boxes and gives more power to partisan election observers. In Texas and other battleground state Republican lawmakers are targeting voters in cities like Houston. These bills take aim at things like 24-hour voting and drive through voting, which all worked pretty well in the 2020 election. Today, at least 50 corporations and over 100 other businesses and community leaders came out against these proposed restrictions. There's a bill in Congress that could stop these attempts at voter suppression before the People Act. That was passed in the House, uh, but is currently stuck in the Senate. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer talked on MSNBC last week about Democrats' approach to the bill. There are a number of members of my caucus who say, let's try things in a bipartisan way. Let's see if we can get Republicans to join us in dealing with this sacred issue of voting rights. And they're going to try. And hey, God bless them. If they can get Republicans to join us in big, bold reform, not dilute half-baked reform, that would be the best way to go. But, but if they can't get us, if they can't get us to join them, mm -hmm. then we will have to put our heads together and figure out a way to get it done. As I've said before, and I've said this to all of my colleagues, failure is not an option. Voting is too sacred, and everything will be on the table to get it. Joining me now is Hayes Brown, a writer and editor for MSNBC Daily. Okay, Hayes, you wrote about how the Senate could pass a voting rights bill. Lay out for us why timing is so important and why the Senate really needs to act pretty quickly here. So it's, timing is really important because everyone's looking ahead to the midterms, to 2022. The For the People Act that passed through the House is about how to basically make it so that there's a level playing field across the country for uh, national elections, for congressional elections. So they have the power to do this. Uh, but the problem is to get all 50 states on board with the changes that this bill requires will take time. So the thinking right now is, you've got to get this bill through the Senate and out to the states so they can figure out how to implement it by August, this fall at the latest. So Democrats don't have a lot of time lined up to figure out what their strategy is to how, for how to get this bill through the Senate, uh, which is right now looking like a huge roadblock for them. They, there's no way for them yet to get to the 60 vote that they need to overcome a filibuster on this bill. So the question is, how do you get from uh, this bill, which is languishing right now, uh, to actually becoming law. And I, I have a few ideas, but it's kind of convoluted, to be honest. Well, I mean, at this point, it might have to be convoluted in order to get it done. I mean, what's your reaction to Schumer saying he's letting Senate Democrats try to get Republican support? Like, who are they negotiating with on the voting rights bill to get I mean, support? Honestly, I mean, or it, who? They're still who negotiating them. with themselves. <laughs> They're still negotiating with themselves. This right. thing. All 50 Democrats aren't quite on board yet with the For the People Act. So the ha version that passed the House, uh, there are still some issues with it. It does need tinkering. Uh, election experts, uh, election administration officials agree with this fact. The fact, the fact that the bill isn't perfect just yet. So the Senate Rules Committee, chaired by Amy Klobuchar, starting next week is going to start marking up this bill. But I, I think that uh, right now the biggest holdout is, surprise, surprise, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who is the main person saying that if we pass this on a purely partisan basis, then it'll just make the country angrier. Somehow this will make it so that the Trump supporters who believe that the election was stolen will somehow think that it was more stolen now if this bill passes with just Democratic votes. So right now, he and a few others who are more concerned about how to make it so that this bill is more palatable to the American people are trying to figure out how to tinker with it, how to possibly pare it down some. But what I argue in my piece and what I think that Chuck Schumer should be thinking about right now is he, so to get a bill onto the floor of the Senate, you have to pass what's called a motion to proceed, which is something that can be filibustered. My question is, why is Chuck Schumer not forcing Republicans right now to filibuster against the For the People Act that passed through the House? Let the Senate work on its own version right now, but he needs to make it very clear moving forward that this is not something, voting reforms are not something that Republicans actually want to see. So he needs to start playing hardball now. 
I mean, what are we waiting for in terms of uh, the hardball uh, uh, strategy being something that Democrats decide to do? Um, I, I just don't understand in terms of, um, to your original point about the timing <laughs> and the fact that we the implementing these new um, voting protections need to be done in time for the next year's midterms. It seems to me that Chuck Schumer needs to get on the phone with Joe Manchin, perhaps, um, and get him to support changing or ending the filibuster like now, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the only way Absolutely. anything can so, really happen. Right, so I, that's part of why he needs to start forcing the Republicans to be filibustering the House version so that when the Senate finishes marking up its version, when they say, okay, here's the version that the Senate Democrats agree on, this is the one that we want to pass, they bring that to the floor and Republicans filibuster that, then it'd be more palatable for Joe Manchin to say, you know what, maybe the filibuster not such a good idea. But in the article I wrote, I go one step further because HR1, uh, the For the People Act, is not the only game in town. Last year, uh, the House passed uh, the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. So basically what this would do, it's a much narrower bill compared to For the People Act. It would actually put back into place the preclearance conditions whereby, so if a state that the Justice Department says, you know what, you guys have really been bad to your people in terms of voting rights. The Justice Department has to clear any changes to their election laws. So that passed through the House last year. Joe Manchin actually supports this narrower bill. Uh, but the problem, even, the, uh, sorry, the Congressional Black Caucus, they also are starting to think maybe we should be focusing on this instead of this broader bill. But it, right now, the changes it needs, uh, Politico reported recently that they think that the change to that, if they don't actually make it a priority, could take until later this year or early next year. My thinking is, why not be working on that right now so you have a backup? The Republicans filibuster the For the People Act. You can bring forward this bill, which in theory they should support since it just updates the one of the landmark pieces of civil right legislation right. in this country. So force them to filibuster that. And if Joe Manchin still says after all of this, the filibuster is good, well, he's just a problem that I don't know how they're going to deal with. Yeah. That, I mean, it feels to me, to your point, that if, if they filibuster both of these things, I mean, this is just basic voting rights uh, legislation, especially in terms of the John Lewis uh, Voting Advancement Act, which is the preclearance to your point, which was um, that great thing with the Voting Rights Act where uh, the, the Justice Department could say, hey, that's racist. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is not allowed. And it feels like that would come into play a lot uh, these days with some of these restrictions we've seen popping up since the 2020 election. Hayes Brown, thank you very much. I love political uh, strategy and brainstorming of like what Democrats can do, because a lot of times they just sit around and wring their hands and they're like, what should we do? Here's a plan. Just print it out. It's easy. It's easy. Just listen to Hayes Brown. He, he has a plan. It's convoluted, but he has a plan. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.